The court hands down judgment today in the case of Barclays Bank PLC and various claimants. A brief explanation of the judgment has been prepared by Lady Hale. As she is unable to present it herself, I shall read it out on her behalf. 126 claimants allege that they were sexually abused by the late Dr. Gordon Bates when he was conducting medical examinations of prospective employees of Barclays Bank between 1968 and about 1984. Dr. Bates died in 2009 and his estate has been wound up. The question in this case is whether Barclays Bank is vicariously liable for any wrongdoing which Dr. Bates may be found to have committed. Vicarious liability means that a person who has done no wrong has to pay damages for the wrong done by someone else. There are two requirements. First, the relationship between the two persons must be such as to make it fair to make the one pay for the fault of the other. Second, there must be a sufficiently close connection between that relationship and the wrong done by the wrongdoer. This case is about the first requirement. Another case in which we're handing down judgment today uh, is about the second. That's the case of William Morrison Supermarket. Historically, the relationships which gave rise to vicarious liability were limited to agency, partnership, and relationship between employers and employees. The employee was working for the employer's business. The employer took the benefit of his work, created the risk that he might do harm to others in the course of his work, and could control what he did. This made it fair for the employer to have to pay for his wrongs. But a person who engaged an independent contractor, such as a plumber, builder, or painter and decorator, was not liable for any wrongdoing that he might do in the course of the job. Recent decisions in the higher courts have expanded liability from employment to relationships sufficiently akin to employment to make it fair that the person in charge should pay for the wrongdoing. Thus, the bishop of a Roman Catholic diocese was vicariously liable for sexual abuse committed by a priest working in his diocese, although the priest was not strictly his employee. The Order of Christian Brothers was vicariously liable for sexual abuse committed by members of the order when teaching in a boys' residential school, although the brothers were not employed by the order. The Ministry of Justice was vicariously liable for the negligence of a prisoner who dropped a sack of rice on the claimant while he was working in the prison. And a local authority was vicariously liable for physical and sexual abuse allegedly committed by foster parents looking after a child in the authority's care. In this case, both the High Court judge and the Court of Appeal thought that those decisions meant that in certain circumstances, a person might be vicariously liable for the wrong, wrongs done by an independent contractor and held Barclays Bank liable for any wrongs which Dr. Bates might be found to have committed. The bank appeals to this court. The court holds unanimously that the cases which have expanded the concept of employment to include relationships akin or analogous to employment have not eroded the historical distinction between an employee or a near employee and an independent contractor. An employee or near employee is working in and for the employer's business or enterprise. An independent contractor is working for his own business or enterprise. Dr. Bates 
was not an employee or anything close to an employee of the bank. He was in business on his own account as a medical practitioner with a portfolio of patients and clients. He did some work in NHS hospitals as an employee of the NHS. He conducted medical examinations for a variety of clients, including the bank. He wrote in weekly newspaper articles. His work for the bank was a very small proportion of his work. The bank made the appointments and sent him the form to fill in, and they paid him a fee for each report. They did not pay him a retainer. He could refuse to do a requested examination if he chose. He no doubt carried his own medical liability insurance, although this may not have covered deliberate wrongdoing of the sort alleged. In short, he was a classic independent contractor for whom the person engaging him is not vicariously liable. It is, of course, most regrettable that these allegations did not come to light until after Dr. Bates had died. Nothing in this judgment seeks to deny or downplay the very serious harm which sexual abuse of the sort alleged against Dr. Bates can do. But the relationship between Dr. Bates and the bank was not such that the bank should be made to pay for it. Hence, the bank's appeal is allowed. The judgment is given by Lady Hale, with whom the other members of the court agree.